today's video, I'll give you a review after 1500 miles of driving the Chevy Silverado EV RST. We have uh, had a great time with it so far. There are a couple of issues, most of them are software based, but um, overall, it's a fantastic vehicle. Check it out. I'll first give you a quick tour. I don't want to spend too much time on this because there's so many really good uh, tours of the car when it was first launched. Everything is pretty much the same as when they were showing it off in, um, where was it, Detroit or somewhere in Michigan. Anyway, it looks really good. It's definitely the best vehicle I've ever had. Before this I had two Tesla Model Ys, a Model 3, a um, Kia Soul EV and a Smart 4 True EV. So, been a lot of EVs. It has the longest range. All the features are super good. Uh, the only thing is the software needs some, some improvements. The upgrades that I have added to this vehicle are added these stripes here. Of course, that makes them go real fast. At least it looks good. They are textures, it's textured. So they look excellent. I also had molded mud flaps and I had all the emblems murdered out so they are black you have one there one here in the front and then the one on the rear I also added the lights to the um, flex gate so let's see here oh well, yeah here you can also see the blacked out emblem here we go the flex gate open that part open one more this is just a backstop if you press down here one more time it turns into a step and here you got a couple of options I went ahead and added uh, lights there and there if you want the Bluetooth sound system then it's not compatible with the light so I'm gonna stick with uh, keeping the lights and no exterior sound system I also upgraded the toner cover to um, hard cover so you can see it folds back on itself you gotta release it twice here one more time and then at the end don't forget to buckle it so that it will not uh, fly off when you're uh, driving that's a little hard to do with one hand but it's doable one there one on the other side and as you guys have probably seen you can open up this flex gate either just one side or the whole thing uh, or the, the whole thing with the window gone as well and if you do that you get 10 foot 10 inches worth of space now let's talk about the minor issues I've had with it so far so all of these will be fixed for free by the dealer but here's one when I close the car if I have it set to auto fold the mirrors this right mirror doesn't know what to do so it folds and then it starts twitching so eventually it stops but um, that is something that they'll have to fix this obviously some kind of a positioning sensor that is not working next we'll go inside by the way I love this animation it's pretty badass let's go inside so underneath the accelerator pedal it's a little dirty here now I have the carpet back there it's peeling back so that's something they have to look at also on top of the dash you can see this triangle here it's not seated right there's a clip down here that's not working they also missed a cover that should be over here where the front seat goes ahead and uh, anchors should be covered there you can see one on the other side next I'm gonna go over my issues with the display itself I'm coming from a Tesla world where everything is pretty organized um, and the issues I'm having with this display is can mostly be categorized into one out of two issues. Either there are way too many items spread out over too many menus, 
or you find the same controls in uh, different menus. So let's start with um, controls, for example. This icon right here takes you to controls. So does that one. And so does that one. So on the screen right now, you can access controls here, here, or here. Very unnecessary. Next, we got lights. It would be great if all the lights were just put into one menu. I'll show you three different places that we have uh, controls for lights. One is over here. You have a light bulb, click that one. You can turn the headlights to auto, parking, or uh, I guess that's fog lights or off. Another one is you go to, let's go to controls. Again, you can go here or there. From here, go to the see more controls. And over here, exact same lo logo as over here. But completely different settings. So here you got the dome lights, on or off. The cargo lights, you can select that one. Turn that on or off. You also have the auto high beams on or off. And then the same uh, headlight settings as you had over here. But you can press it and you can read a bit more about each individual one. Uh, next one is, if we exit this, go to settings. And head over to vehicle and from here we go to lighting Let's see oh go back go back lighting now this one is the headlights and and the if you want to have an automation as you approach the vehicle or not if when you lock it when you unlock it so I would love for all those to be put in one light menu. For example, right here, just have access to everything right here or up here. Just put it in one. I have the same issue with sound. They're also spread out over a whole bunch of menus, maybe even more. So one of them is, let's go back here. So from here we can go to settings, vehicle, audio settings, sound, here you can uh, uh, control the bass, the mid-range, or the treble. Now if we go uh, back one. So we're um, still under, well we'll go all the way back. So we're under settings. We're under vehicle. But from here we go to, what is it? Uh, comfort and convenience. There you got a chime volume. You can select the chime volume from here to down here, but you cannot turn it off. Again, it's another sound thing. Why not put it in one menu? Then we'll go back again. We'll go to settings. And then we'll go to sound. From here, you select the maximum volume at startup. So you can say what the max should be uh, when your vehicle starts up. You can also select this click, click, click that you hear when I touch things. You can select that feedback on or off. Now up on top here, you see those notes. If you press the notes, it will take you to your sound system where you can select different inputs. Uh, I like this. This is good. However, if you go down to the gear, and click sound now you're in that same menu again so that's four different places that you get to audio yet another duplicate is the uh, ec uh, exit vehicle height you can set that one in two different places as well and it's even under the same menu it's under settings then go to vehicle and then from here, we had to control and comfort. And let's see where it is. Exit vehicle heights. You can turn that on or off right here. Now we're still under settings and vehicle, but instead of control and comfort, let's just go back one and let's go to right height. Same thing. Why is it there? No clue. 
Something nice that they put in here is drive modes. You can set up different setups for either you can configure your own mode, normal, off-road, or towing. Under my mode, you could set up how you want your suspension, steering, acceleration, motor sound to feel. Uh, motor sound, if you have an electric vehicle, you probably don't want to pump in sound into the cab. But if you choose to, you can do that here. Now, of course, this is duplicated elsewhere. Why? I don't know. But you go in here to settings. Then you go to vehicle. And then you go to drive mode customization. That is exactly the same as my mode from this menu right here. So there. If I'm driving and I get a notification, it will show up on the screen here and it will ask me if I want to play the message and then when I'm done, I can hit dismiss. And what happens is it goes away, but for some reason, this bell up here will still show the, uh, the message. So even though I said to dismiss it, it does not clear the bell. I wish they would take that away. Then we have auto park assist. I have never ever been able to get that to work. That could definitely be something that I'm doing wrong, but just can't get it at all to work. Same goes for Alexa. Click on Alexa, it'll ask you to sign in. You scan the QR code right here. And once I've done that, you would think that it would link. My phone says it's linked, but this never goes away. So Alexa does not work for me. For charging, I wish the interface was better. So if I was to go over here and I just click charging, I can set up my uh, home charging and set up some routes and that kind of stuff. But if I just want to look at nearby chargers, it will not show them on the map. It will just show a list of them right here. So that kind of sucks. Also, it won't show me the speed of the route of the uh, charger itself. What it will show me is the name of it, and then I can go to some filters. I can turn on or off different providers, but and I can search by availability and their charger type. So I have not selected level one or two, just fast charging, but a uh, 250 kilowatt charger is a fast charger, but so is a 350 DC. So more filters would be better. Then there are three super annoying sounds. This vehicle, whenever I have it in drive and I am going less than 25 miles an hour, there's the constant hum. So for most electric vehicles, you probably heard this, but that is when you are driving. This vehicle does it when you have it in drive, but you are sitting still. So if you're at a stoplight, everyone next to you has to listen to this thing go, uh. Another one is, if I want to go real fast, I got a drive mode. From any mode, I can select, wow, wide open watts. All right, that's cool and all. But at this point, I don't have a choice. I must listen to the piped in audio of fake engine noise. They need to have an option to turn that on or off. And the last one we talked about earlier, it is the chime. If I open the door, you hear this chime. And it will chime if I'm sitting in here, if I just got in, it will continue ding 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 until I exit. I just want to be able to turn it off. This uh, next issue has to do with um, the heads up display. So as you can see now, I can see the driver's display and the heads up display just fine. There you go. However, if you have polarized glasses on, when you put those on, let's see if I can sneak them over the top here, you will see the driver display just fine, but the heads up display gets real dim. The only way you see it is by turning your head 90 degrees, and then it shows up. Turn it back, it goes away. Turn it, comes back. So that's just a feature of polarized glasses. 
So one place the Super Cruise has issues is in turns. It will overturn, then over, underturn, overturn, underturn. So it keeps, uh, it keeps searching for it instead of just having a constant um, pressure on the turn there. That's it guys. We love this truck. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions, anything you would like for us to check out, or if you have any questions about the software or anything else. Anyway, please uh, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.